government. Now, you've probably heard this statement, enemy of the state, before. You've probably even heard from others that the government turned the population into effectively enemies. And you've probably heard about some of the laws that they put into place. What probably hasn't been clear enough is how and why and why and how they still get away with it. Let's start with Canon 3384 now. And it's actually what the word enemy really means before we get into it. Because again, it's a word that is presumed to mean something. So the word enemy was first in invented, believe it or not, by our friends, the Jesuits, in the Jesuit College of English in the late 16th century. And like over 2,500 other words, was delivered through the guise of Shakespeare portfolio with his entire completed legal system. It's part of the introduction of the first mind-influenced system that eventually replaced physical slavery with voluntary slavery of the mind. All this system, passports, licenses, birth certificates, it's all about controlling your mind, mind control. Now, the word enemy, despite what they say, is derived from two Latin words, Eno, meaning to fly, swim, or move away from, and amere, meaning to buy, trade, or purchase on credit. That's the original meaning of enemy, those two words, eno and amere. And so what you get in the true original enemy is simply one who declines to buy, trade, or purchase on credit with the Venetian Khazar Magyar trading bankers. Well, let's look at Hollywood. Who is the enemy of Hollywood for the last hundred years? That's right. It's the communist. It's a socialist. And what do they threaten? They threaten capitalism. They threaten the free market. And how do they threaten the very survival of the system? Because they will not trade. They will not engage in commerce. The whole system is based on you having a bank account with their banks, buying their crap, not growing your own vegetables and food, not engaging in commerce between yourselves. It is all about engaging in commerce, staying in commerce, spend, spend, spend. And if you don't, and God forbid, if anyone comes and says you shouldn't, then they're a terrible communist. They're a terrible socialist. They're an anti-capitalist. And they are an enemy of the state. Now, any claim in Canon 3385 that enemy historically meant anything other than one who declines to buy, trade, or purchase on credit with the Venetian Khazar Magia trader bankers is absolutely false. The claimed etymology of the word enemy, meaning adversary, stranger, hostile, or unfriendly, is completely contradictory to the well-established Latin terms such as adversor, externus, hostis, and uh, inimicus, which were already well-established. Now, the concept of enemy of the state in Roman statute is wholly consistent with the original meaning of the word and is a commercial term and was arbitrarily assigned not simply to those who declared war against the government as per private international law, but to those that simply lived in areas deemed enemy territory. And you would be amazed to see that that is effectively what is listed in their system. Now, it remains the primary duty of most government to protect the private banks under the ongoing terms of bankruptcy, linked back to the formation of the Bank for International Settlements. There's that word again, settlements. I mean, they couldn't call it the Bank for International Plantations, could they? And the deliberate bankrupting of the world in the 1930s, the primary goal statutes defining enemy of the state is not national security, but security and safety of the banks and its owners. Now, to put, just to nail it now before we move on, because time is running out, simply what they did at the turn of the 20th century 
is they made us all enemies of the state. And so the birth certificates became effectively our enemy license to trade and have a bank account. They turned us all into enemies. And you'll see in the next one how they did that. And they did that when we talked about Article 329, prisoners of the state, turning us all into prisoners of state. Now, again, I'm going to run out of time here, so I'm going to paraphrase, but when you have a chance to go back, please have a look, because the information is clearly outlined in these canons. But in Canon 3393, a prisoner of state, also known as a political prisoner, is any person who, entitled to certain rights by birth or citizenship, is denied such rights by alienation and imprisonment by the policies of the government because their beliefs or action are considered in conflict, opposition, or a perceived threat to the elite. Now, I know many of you, as did I, believe that when I read the Constitution of the nation that I was born, I believed I belonged to, that I had certain inalienable rights. See that word inalienable? Not alienable? Well, guess what? In America, they alienated your rights and they did that hundreds of years ago. What do I mean by alienation? An alien. In 3394, we make it clear. The word alienation and alien comes from the Latin root alieno, meaning to treat as a foreigner, to seize or transfer away someone's property, to distort the law from its normal state. Hence, when a government alienates its people, it seizes their property without fair recourse, distorts the law, and treats them as foreigners. Sound familiar? Now, contrary to our friends in Hollywood, in 3395, the most infamous use of such fascist and anti-capitalist law in history actually is, believe it or not, the United States against its own people. When President John Adams, who they raise up as a great patriot and, and freedom fighter, guess why? Because he was far from it. In 1798, called the Alien Sedition Acts, four acts were introduced. What they don't tell you, acts from 1798 is still in effect and in force today since the American Civil War. The Alien Enemies Act. There's that word enemies again. Now combined with alien. In 1798. To justify the theft of private property of countless patriots and citizens of the United States by its government. You ever heard about them taking the gold from people? Well, they use that under the Alien Enemies Act. Have you heard about people losing property in the war? Well, that was the Alien Enemies Act. Go back and look at what happened. The, uh, the land and the material that was taken from landowners in, landowners in the South in the Civil War, that was the Alien Enemies Act. It's been used over and over again and has never been repealed and is still in force today because they're still renewing the emergency orders from the Civil War every, uh, every year the president must renew those laws, the executive order of Lincoln. Now, 940, Canon 3396, the government of the District of Columbia falsely claimed to be the government, when does it falsely claims to be the government of the United States, issued a new law called the Alien Registration Act, effectively converting all the United States citizens into registered resident aliens. So what you became, if you live in the States, was a registered resident alien, disenfranchising all of their rights uh, when people believed that they had the protection of the Constitution. And the law and that process has been repeated right throughout the world so that it is a non-registered, non-resident alien 
that now has rights. Sounds perverse. I mean, you've probably heard people talk about this. They say, if you want to be recognised as having rights by the government, you have to call yourself a non-registered. That means you're not on the slave roll. You're not a pauper, right? Non-registered, non-resident, alien. And if you are a non-registered, non-resident alien, then you are considered to have rights. That's how perverse it is. They did the giant switcheroonie and they turned us all into prisoners. I mean, you can't get any more heinous than that, treacherous than that, to treat your population as prisoners. But that is exactly what they've done around the world, especially in America. Now, in the time left, I'm going to cover Article 330, license, Article 330, because I know that licenses is another area of, of much debate. And then I'm going to round off with Article 333, which is, uh, should be, if I look at this, should be privileged international government. So we're going to get 330, and I'm going to uh, then cover 333. Sorry, it's a lot of words, it's a lot of information, but I, I, you can see that this is all about equipping you with the knowledge in the background. So 3402, a license is an official document under Roman law granting a privilege and or immunity for, for some activity that would otherwise be deemed illegal by the policies of the government. Hence, a license is effectively a grant to perform an act that would otherwise be forbidden. Now we qualify some now in the next two canons, some of the misunderstandings. And I understand those. I've heard them. You know, it's my right to, to travel without a license. It's my right not to have number plates. It's my right to make my own beer. It's my right to grow my own vegetables. Let me explain what they did in converting your ancient rights. I'm not disputing those ancient rights, but I want to clear up how they did the switcherama. So Canon 3403. It is frequently mistaken that a license is merely a permit to do something that would otherwise be lawful. That's what we all think. You know, why do I need a license? I mean, this is an ancient run. I can travel on any of King's roads. Why do I need a license? Because it's just a permit. Well, the mistake is this. It's due to the fact that the government frequently took ancient unregulated rights and customs and then outlawed, outlawed them. And how they did this was by a thing called enclosing. So just as that they disenfranchised us from the land by a thing called enclosure, which we discussed on the settlement certificates, they did the same on rights, by the enclosed rights and the property. So the right of passage in the King's Road is an example. What they did was they enclosed the right to travel and then they privatised the road. Now, 3404 explains how this works. The technique that's frequently used to abrogate ancient rights and freedoms was the same technique to steal the land and property of the people. And it's a legal fiction called enclosure. And by enclosing such ancient right, they effectively claimed it as a private property of an elite few, while the property to which it was also attached was privatised. If you want an example to get your head around the concept Think of patents. Patents are an equivalent system. Now, my kidneys are my kidneys, my lungs are my lungs. No one has the right to claim my kidneys as some private corporate property. But patents, that is exactly what they do. A patent has enclosed the genetic material that makes us up and claims material created by nature is now private property. That is a perfect example of enclosure. And it, it, it makes uh, patents and the fact that patents now are used to deny people medical procedures, patents are now used to create uh, artificial synthetic drugs and, and make anything that's naturally grown unlawful. That is all the example of enclosure, enclosures. Now, under 3405, under this perverse commercial law of the Roman cult, and it is perverse, when one fails to have a license and seeks to assert an ancient right, 
on enclosed 